We made it to Mule Expedition Outfitters with the beautiful Baja Runner. And uh, there's the logo. Anyways, we're gonna go hang out with Joe, get a tour of the shop, and check out this build a little more. We saw it at Northwest Overland Rally. We've been seeing that new Baja runner at the rallies and everything, so <laughs> maybe take a little more in depth look at that. But cool, I'll let you yeah, go check man. it out. We'll, we'll let you lead the way. We're Mule Expedition Outfitters, where our store is in Issaquah, Washington. And uh, we started the store because we were super passionate about getting out and living off grid and rolling with our rigs, and realized that there wasn't a lot out there for folks to be able to, you know, basically take the stuff out to their trucks in the parking lot and make sure everything fit. Or, just check the quality and stuff like that. So, so we stocked a lot of stuff. Um, I had a blast checking out the shop with Joe. So check out that video if you want to see more about the Mule Expedition shop. But in this video, we're taking an in-depth look at the Baja Runner. So let's check it out. This thing is cool. 40s, man. 40s, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> they look, they, actually, the 40s on this truck look small, I'll be honest. Uh, yeah. Look at the clearance. Uh, we were really happy to be able to build this you know, essentially a Prospector XL uh, with a four-wheel flatbed camper on it um, here for the shop. Just gave us the opportunity to uh, really show what you could do um, with essentially what comes down to pre-made or, or mostly built-on parts. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of custom on this truck. In the past, we've built other vehicles. We've done tons of custom work. Uh, but when it comes down to it, if you want to replicate uh, something for a customer, it's much easier if you can just order what you want from the manufacturer and then and then it's up to our team of skilled uh, installers to basically make it all happen for you. This truck took us about six weeks, um, a single tech about six weeks to build, um, but we did things that most folks wouldn't necessarily do like color match the cab to the to the camper yeah. um, and the graphics and uh, you know, getting the wheels custom powder coated and stuff like that. So there's a few things on here that uh, that uh, were a little bit, I guess call them additional mm -hmm. customizations. But generally, uh, in general, most of the parts or all the parts on this truck are commercially available and um, as installers, we can install for anybody. Uh, yeah. Washington's kind of one of those places where you do find a lot of deadfall and stuff like that, a lot of low branches, and, uh, and it can be difficult to get the bigger trucks down. Spaces. This is where this truck was really built for. Yeah, a lot to talk about. Yeah. Uh, of course, as you notice, it is a flatbed camper. It's sitting on a Norweld Deluxe full-size eight-foot tray from Norweld out of Australia. Uh, you're looking at a, a Hawk model uh, four-wheel camper. The Hawk is the generally it's set up for a six and a half foot bed. We've got it sitting on an eight-foot bed. But what that allows us to do is to run this tunnel box that Norweld also fabricates, which on the, well, depending on the side that you put it on, we have it on the passenger side, but it allows you to run the full-size spare. We don't just use them for just throwing gear. What we did was we installed uh, all of our air up and air down system for the airbags in here, along with a uh, twin compressor and an ARB uh, air storage tank. And what this system allows you to do is to basically air up one side or the other of the truck to give you some um, leveling capability at camp, but it's also supplemental suspension. Um, you know, we can run the truck without any air in the airbags because the airbags we chose are uh, equipped with internal bump stops. Uh, but sometimes if you're heavily loaded, you just want to get a little bit of the bounce and the, and the dip out of the rear of the camper the airbags can supplement the suspension that's in there. So this was one of the few custom parts we built for the truck. It's a combination of a rear winch mount and recovery point, but it also runs up and it's, a, it's the rear support for the flatbed. And the reason we did this is because um, we wanted to make sure that there was plenty of four, to, uh, four and a half um, 
structural integrity to carry mm -hmm. the flatbed and camper. So in the event of a, a collision or hitting an animal or, or just heavy wheeling off-road, we didn't want that camper and uh, flatbed to kind of push towards the so cab. I come up 12.5k uh, winch with synthetic line. Um, we got the Factor 55 XXL uh, recovery link. A couple of rigid backup lights there. Not too much for lighting on this truck. It didn't really. We got some big light cannons on the front. But uh, again, all these little storage boxes and stuff are great. Um, of course, four wheel campers does a nice job of hooking you up. If you get the hot water system option on the four wheel camper, you get in addition the outdoor shower which is super cool. So basically you just take this guy, and plug it in, turn it on. Of course the water pump's not on at the moment, but it gives you some water out the back so you can shower up when you get off, uh, off the mountain bike or dirt bike or whatever you're doing. Temperature control right there too. So. Oh wow, temperature control yeah, right there. Yeah, so you got Very hot cool. water so you go from hot to cold and once you hit the off button it basically allows you to extract this guy. So, yeah, these are super well made and they're always uh, continually making improvements to these four-wheel campers. It seems like every time we go down there for uh, a visit, they've got some new thing they're working on. The tunnel box, which is the flip side of the, of the spare tire carrier. And uh, again, this guy is not 100% complete at this point, but what we've got here is a little electrical distribution panel that we fabbed in-house. Um, gives us the ability to disconnect um, basically camper power, this is the power to the air compressor, which was in that box on the other side. This is going to be a future upgrade will be a second lithium battery, which will be tucked in behind there. So it'll be some cut power to that lithium battery from the charging system. And then this auxiliary battery um, basically ties into uh, this little blue C panel here, which charges our uh, 20 and 60 volt batteries for all the DeWalt power tools that we carry in the truck. So impact guns, we got a bunch of other tools that are kind of packed away, but my favorite is uh, this guy here, which is our uh -huh. DeWalt, DeWalt chainsaw, which uh, works awesome if you're, especially if you're needing to cut your way out of a uh, situation where you've got a bunch of deadfall in the middle of the trail, or if you just want to cut up firewood and camp. There's a long, a long story behind why we chose uh, gas over diesel. Uh, primarily, there's, there's three reasons why we chose it. Um, the places that we go in Baja, uh, we found uh, outside of the major highway, which is the, the one down in Baja, there's not a lot of access to diesel. Um, a lot of the times there's just a guy on the side of the road with a 55 gallon drum and a hose, you pull up, you siphon some gas into your truck. Um, secondly, uh, the diesel engine does weigh quite a bit more than the gas motor. Um, from my experience, you know, use driving other other uh, customers' vehicles that we've done AEV XL Prospector style builds with, I, de I generally feel like there's more um, front end weight, uh, mm -hmm. the weight transfer and stuff like that is something that's a lot more noticeable on the diesel trucks. It's the Baja Runner. So the Baja Runner in the Blade Runner font. I'm a big big Blade Runner fan, um, so kind of dug that font for the for the graphics. Um, what, you, what we're looking at here, obviously, is the Seattle skyline. It's where we live. It's where our shop is. Uh, Mount Rainier in the background. Then we got the mule kind of coming up over the horizon, rising sun or rising moon, however you want to uh, figure that one. But uh, it does tell a little bit of a story. So this is kind of where we are. It's where we work. But what we really like to do is to get out and get into the desert. So actually, the other side's a little bit, gets a little bit better of an image. Uh, but the graphic on the back of the camper is essentially uh, the Gigantes Mountains down in southern Baja. And so you kind of go from the northwest down to the far south. And uh, that's, that's the, the reason we built this truck was really to make those, make those shuttle runs down there and, and camp and, and just see all the cool features and natural places along the way. Yokohama set us up with these. MTs, which is their new, like, super hardcore mud terrain tire. And I'm going to be 100% honest, when they first uh, sent these tires over, I thought, man, these things are going to be noisy. They're going to ride terrible on the highway. And uh, it's, just, it's just not going to be a long-term solution for this truck. Well, I was 100% wrong on all accounts. These tires are 
probably quieter than some of the AT tires I've run. Super nice ride, and uh, obviously, given the spacing on those lugs, the traction off-road is, is incredible. Yeah, they look really aggressive. I like the looks of them a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. super good. And the yeah. space between the lugs, and this is something like, uh, you normally would see like on a, on a heavy duty military vehicle, this spacing, so yeah. shedding mud and stuff like that is, is pretty much what these tires are designed to do. What we're using is kind of a, a, a mix of AEV's uh, three inch lift kit. Um, we did pass on the Bilstein uh, 2.0's that come with the kit. Uh, they're an emulsion shock and uh, given the amount of weight that we're going to carry and the places that we're going to take the truck, uh, we thought that it would be best, better suited to have a remote reservoir to keep that nitrogen and oil separate so you don't get a, a lot of uh, suspension fade when you're going down those washboard roads. And additionally, we went to a 2.5 shock body so we could run a larger shaft just, just to make it extra beefy because, you know, a lot of weight on the rig, you're going off-road, you don't know how you're going to be loading those shocks. and and. Uh, you know, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, you, you want to have uh, overbuilt versus underbuilt, or maybe just something that's going to be right on par. But a ADS custom made us a set of pin top piggyback uh, 2.5 remote red, remote red shocks. Uh, we have those on all four corners. Mm -hmm. uh, so far, the ride quality has been just unbelievable. ADS um, piggyback remote red shocks. Again, Guys, look them up. ADS, fantastic little company um, out of Arizona. And Arizona Desert Shocks, I believe, is what ADS stands for. And these guys make a phenomenal product. Um, and the nice thing about them, too, is the suspension for this truck is 100% custom. Um, there was no off-the-shelf uh, uh, option for us, given the weight that we were carrying and the, being able to contact ADS. And within four weeks, we had a set of shocks for the truck, which is phenomenal, and right out of the box, I mean, they pretty much nailed it. We gave them uh, a couple of different uh, measurements, you know, extended compressed length that we needed, and the style of vehicle was going on, and then how much weight we were going to be carrying on the vehicle in addition to the, the actual weight of the vehicle itself, and the truck rides amazing, like a Cadillac. And then, of course, high mark fender flares, we talked about that earlier, um, clearing those big 40s. Uh, much an necessity. Um, and then, the, and then the, of course, AEV's uh, Prospector front bumper. Uh, it's a beautiful bumper uh, aesthetically and functionally. Um, we've installed a ton of these on full-size trucks and, of course, on the JKs. And, and at some point when they release it for the JLs, we'll be doing a similar bumper. We've got these really nice heavy-duty recovery points, which tie directly into the frame, which is killer. And uh, again, uh, we got the come up 16.5 on the front, a uh, little front facing camera here so I can see over the, when I can't see over the hood, I can see what's going on in front of me. Um, and of course, uh, Vision X light cannons. Again, like I said, these are really the only additional lights we have on the vehicle. Uh, but if anybody's had a chance to look at these Vision X multi LED cannons, whether you get them in the fours, the six and a half, or the eight inch cannons, they are extremely red extremely uh, yeah they're pretty amazing lights for sure so if, if you're looking for a very subtle look to the front of your vehicle without putting on too many light bars and things like that but you still want that off-road lighting uh, capability uh, definitely check these out I run them on my my uh, Colorado and it's pretty much all we need it's like turning daytime on another little, little thing we did is, uh, on the come up winch we did relocate the, uh, the solenoid behind the grill there and sort of oh, see that cool. nested back there and then we also put the plug in for the uh, winch control right here in the center of the grill so you don't have to pop the hood in order to you know use your winch your winch of course all the come-ups do come with uh, remote uh, remotes as well as a standard feature so we do have that option to run it off a remote so if I'm way out you know near a tree trying to get the winch line hooked up and the wife's in the car driving I can I can start you know getting things prepped uh, nice from, What else? Yeah, uh, AEV um, snorkel, uh, again, with the pre-filter on top. 
this guy's going to keep you uh, keep your air box uh, cleaner and uh, if you do uh, get into a water fording situation obviously it's going to keep the uh, water out of your engine one thing i need to point out uh, we've got arb air chucks on both sides of the truck being a larger truck when you're wanting to air up um, the even a 30 foot hose isn't going to be enough to get you from one side of the truck to the other so generally speaking it's easier to just plug in on the side, air up your two driver's side tires, and then flip over to the other side. There's an identical uh, air chuck in the identical location on the other side. That's pretty much the outside, uh, as far as I know, unless I missed something. Uh, <laughs> do you guys want to check out the inside? Yeah, of course. I don't know. I don't mean, no, let's just, no, let's no yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> so for that, you guys are going to have to check out the next video where we do a full interior walk around. I was really thankful that Joe shared all these details and I wanted to make sure that I could split it up in a couple different videos uh, because there's just so much good stuff that he's talking about. And he's a really knowledgeable guy who's had hands-on use with tons of different products. So be sure to hit that subscribe so you don't miss the interior walk around. Check out my other videos. I got tons of travel videos and walk arounds of other rigs. Also, just got down to mob.com up. Um, got all sorts of different things there, and it kind of connects all the media outlets and everything that I'm doing right now. Drop a comment, let me know what you think, and of course, the only question is are you down to mob?